I want to kind of give us an idea of the language of the biblical prophets, the language of the scriptures, the language of the text. It's very important that we understand when we are reading the prophetic books in, 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 in the scriptures, by the prophetic books, I'm speaking Daniel, Revelation, Isaiah, Ezekiel, when we are reading those books, it's important to understand we're reading symbolisms. We're reading truth, but it's given in symbolism. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 says this, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show, unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and he signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bore record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw mm -hmm. blessed now notice this blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy now I want to make a statement here I want to make a statement I am being blessed as I'm reading this book you are being blessed as you're hearing the book read you said well Daryl how can you say that because what the scripture said is blessed is he that readeth I'm reading which means I'm being blessed and they that hear the words of this prophecy. You're hearing the words of the prophecy, so you're going to be blessed because you're hearing. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, let me make a statement here. The book of Revelation was written nearly 2,000 years ago. It was written by John the Apostle on the Isle of Patmos nearly 2,000 years ago, and the angel said that the time is at hand. Now, understand something about God when it comes to time. When biblical prophecy speaks about time, it's talking about prophetic calendar events. So he said to John, the time is at hand. That time that is at hand is literally revealed the epics of time through the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is the culmination of all of the scriptures in one book. Everything from Genesis to 3 John culminates in the book of Revelation. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Are you with me so far? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God the Father gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So this is what we have. We have the revelation or the unveiling of Jesus that the Father gave to him for him, Jesus to show unto his servants. You got the picture? You see the progression? This revelation begins in the Father. It's given to the Son so that the Son can show the servants 
things which must shortly come to pass. This is not a fanciful book that's made up based out of somebody's dream or vision. This is the revelation. Mm, mm, mm. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now watch this. And he sent and signified it. Very important word. Signified it. The book of Revelation is given in symbols. It's, it's like sign language. It's, it's communicated to John, but it's communicated in symbols. Are, are you with me? So the key here is to understand how to understand the symbols. Once you understand the symbols, then you get the message that's contained in the book. Now, we are not left to guess what the symbols are because all of the symbols that you read in the book of Revelation are found elsewhere in the Word of God. Are you with me? This, see, this is how the prophets worked, right? The prophets worked with a consistent word. And so to understand the communication of a prophet you had to understand the communication of the prophet that went before that prophet because all of the prophets built upon the former prophet. Are you with me? That's how God reveals his truth in the earth. Unlike today where we just have prophets running around talking about all kind of stuff. <laughs> We're going to talk about them prophets in a minute. We're going to get into this thing about Babylon. So, so what we have here is we have a book that's been given to us by God, which interprets itself. It is the self-revelation of God. God communicated him, his word, which reveals himself, and he communicated it to the fathers by the prophets. Hebrews 1 and 1, one of my favorite texts. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, right? That's what God did. But he has now in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So God at one time spoke to the fathers by the prophets. But now since Jesus has come, he's spoken to us through his son. Are you with me? The, pro the apostles were given the revelation of what the prophets talked about under the old covenant. I want to help you tonight. The apostles received the revelation of what God spoke through the prophets under the first covenant. This is why the prophetic word and the apostolic word is a consistent word but Jesus is the key to open both of them up. Are you with me? All right, so let's keep going. I, I just have to lay this foundation because I need for y'all to understand where I'm going. So this is what God did. He gave it and he gave this message to John and he gave it to John in symbolism. So we have to understand how to decode the symbolism. Are you with me? All right, here we go. So let's, let's get to Babylon here for a minute. Revelation chapter 14 says this. And I'm not going to read it all. <laughs> but something very interesting happens in Revelation chapter 14. And it says this. Verse 6. He says, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel. Note, it's the everlasting gospel. Because the gospel never changes. The gospel that was preached by Jesus is the same gospel that was preached by the apostles. Which is the same gospel that has been preached by faithful men and women of God down through the ages of time. The gospel has not changed. 
Are you with me? It is the everlasting gospel. Now, there are gospels that are being preached today that are not the gospel. There is a Jesus that's being preached today that is not the Jesus of the text. There is a spirit that is being received today that is not the Holy Spirit. And we're going to see where all of this is coming from. It's coming from Babylon. So we need to understand who mystery Babylon is. Because once you understand who mystery Babylon is, you'll understand the system and the spirit that is at work in the day in which we live that is bringing mass confusion, mass division, and mass deception to many people. Remember, Jesus made the statement. He said that deception will be so rampant in the earth, if it were possible, it would deceive the very elect. Remember, the whole world will be deceived into following the beast. Understand, all of this stuff is true. It's symbolism. And we need to understand how it's working so we are not deceived. Revelation 14, 6 the everlasting gospel unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice to fear God and give glory to him because the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Verse 8 and there followed another angel saying babylon is fallen is fallen that great city why because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication you got the picture babylon is fallen is fallen that great city why because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and we're going to open this up revelation chapter 17 john is writing again and he says this there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and he talked with me saying unto me come here and I'm going to show unto you the judgment of the great whore now here we go he says come here John I'm going to send unto you I'm going to show you the judgment of the great whore are you with me mm, mm, mm. that sits upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication we keep seeing this phrase the wine of her fornication the wine of her fornication the wine of her fornication so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman now this gets interesting he said i saw a woman and this woman was sitting upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns now i wish i had the time to go in and really talk about this beast with the seven heads and the ten horns but we're not looking at the beast tonight we're just going to talk about this woman this whore of babylon stay with me hey pastor marlis it says, so he carried me away in the spirit into the world, and I saw a woman. And this woman was sitting upon a scarlet colored beast full 
of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead, now watch this now, upon her forehead was a name written Mystery Babylon the Great. Verse 8, or verse 5. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. Now watch. The mother of harlots and of abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, <laughs> you got to get this picture here. John is getting this powerful revelation. And he hears earlier in chapter 14 this word, and it says that Babylon is fallen it's fallen because she has made all nations drink of the wine of her fornication and that's all he hears but later on in the text he gets this vision and he sees this woman and this woman is sitting verse 17 verse 1 this woman is sitting upon many waters you with me verse 3 says that john was then carried away in the spirit into the wilderness and he sees this woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns now here's what's interesting now remember i talked about symbolisms in the bible here's something interesting here's something interesting when you read Revelation chapter 17 and it describes the beast that the woman was sitting on with the seven heads and the ten horns, this is not the first time this beast is identified. In fact, you will find this same beast talked about in Revelation chapter 12. Same beast. You will also find this beast talked about in Revelation chapter 13. Same beast. Then the beast pops up again in Revelation 17 and Revelation 18. Same beast. Now, if you've been with me before, when we talk about anything done with Bible prophecy, you know that a beast in scripture represents an empire. A beast in scripture represents a kingdom a beast in prophecy represents a nation this beast is the same beast that is recorded in daniel chapter 7 it's the same beast so once we can identify who the beast is in daniel 7 in revelation 12 Revelation 13, when we get to Revelation 17, we already know who the beast is with the seven heads and the ten horns. History tells us, as well as all of the Protestant reformers informs us, the beast was pagan Rome. All right? So suffice that to say what, 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 what that, all right? So we won't get into that right now. That's a whole other message. But we have, we have this woman, and this woman is riding on this beast. And we're just trying to identify who is this woman? Who is this woman, Mystery Babylon? Now watch this. Let's go back for a minute into Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, note... There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman 
clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered, right? And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Sounds like that beast that we read about in Revelation chapter 17. Now remember, because Revelation also says in Revelation chapter 12, I believe it is, that the dragon gave its seat and its power to the beast. And so what we have is a transfer of power from the beast or from the serpent, Satan, to the beast, pagan Rome, and that power then was transferred into papal Rome. Are, are, are you with me? <laughs> are you with me? We have Satan giving his power to papal Rome. Pagan Rome. All right. The serpent waiting to devour the child. All right. But this dragon gives its power to the beast. Pagan Rome. But something happens with pagan Rome that manifests and comes up again in Revelation chapter 17. Because this woman, let's talk about women in biblical prophecy for a minute. Because it's going to shock you. It's going to shock you who this woman is. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse, let's start at verse 13. Isaiah 26, 13 says, O Lord our God, other lords beside you have had dominion over us, but by you only will we make mention of your name. Hmm? They are dead, they shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore, have you visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. You have increased the nation, O Lord. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. You had removed it far unto the ends of the earth. Lord, in trouble have they visited me. They poured out a prayer when they were chastening upon them. Verse 17, like as a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery is in pain and cries out, in her pain, so we have been in your sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the earth fallen. Who is the prophet Isaiah talking about when he says, like as a woman with child, we... He's talking about the nation of Israel. Because biblically speaking and prophetically speaking, women are speaking about churches in biblical prophecy. Like a woman with child travailing in pain. Isaiah 26, 17. Let's look at another one. Isaiah chapter 54. And let's look at verse 4. I'm moving kind of quick because I want to get back to this, this whore, Babylon. <laughs> and it says, fear not, or let's start verse 1. Sing, O barren, you that did not bear, bring forth into singing and cry aloud, you that did travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Verse 5. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord has called you as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of your youth when you were refused, saith the Lord, for a small moment have I forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. Understand that when you're reading biblical prophecy, God oft times refers to his people as his wife and as his bride. 
that's old covenant and new covenant let me say it again when you're reading biblical prophecy god often speaks of his people as his wife this is where we start getting into the prophets and god says you know i'm married to you oh faithless house of israel you are my wife I will not divorce you. God has this covenant relationship with his people. God refers to his people as his wife, as his bride, which is why scripture often speaks about the church being in travail with child. That's what Revelation 12 is coming back to. I talked about it before when, when the massacre went out. I feel something here. When the massacre went out in the land of Egypt, the prophet said it was Rachel weeping for her children, for they are not. When the de death decree went out, when Jesus was born, the same prophecy was picked up. Rachel weeping for his her children. Why? Because God views his people, the church, the covenant community, as his wife, a woman. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right. Stay with me now. We're going to get to Babylon in a minute. Isaiah, or Ezekiel chapter 23. Here's an interesting one. And we're going to start at verse 42. And it says this, Ezekiel 23, 44. We're starting at 22. It says, And a voice of a multitude being at ease was with her. And with the men of the common sort were brought forth Sabians from the wilderness. Mm, mm, mm. Let me back up. Let me back up. Here we go. Verse 35. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Because you have forsaken me, this is a prophecy against the nation of Israel. Note the language. Note the language. Uh, let me back up a little bit more. This whole chapter is good. You got to read this. Ezekiel 34. So let me start at verse 27. Thus will I make your lewdness, right, to cease from me, and your whoredom brought from the land of Egypt, so you shall not lift up your eyes unto them, nor remember Egypt anymore. Now watch. Verse 30. I will do these things unto you. He's talking about Israel. He's talking about his covenant people, who he refers to as his wife. Are you with me? The woman. Are you with me? Note. I will do these things unto you because you have gone a whoring after the heathen and because you are polluted with your idols. This is God speaking to unfaithful Israel who was married unto him through covenant, but they had gone a whoring after the heathen. They wanted to be like the nations round about them. And so they began to worship the gods of the nations round about. They began to look like the nations round about. They began to think like the nations round about. They adopted the philosophies of the nations round about. That's what the prophets of Baal were about. They began to adopt the philosophies, the religion, the practices the dress, the adornment of the nations round about them, and the Father says about them, they had gone a whoring after the heathen. Mm, mm, mm. Stay with me. You have walked in the way of your sister. This was Israel. Israel and Judah both apostatized. You have walked in the way of your sister. Therefore will I give her cup into your hand note the language this is what i'm saying when you're reading the book of revelation and you're reading the symbolisms everything you will find in the book of revelation has already been dealt with somewhere else in the text so we've got god's covenant people 
who have gone a whoring after the other nations. Stay with me. God said, I'm going to give her cup into your hand. Thus says the Lord, you shall not drink of your sister's cup deep and large. You shall be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It contains much. You shall be filled with drunk. Now, what did it say that Babylon had done to the nations? It said the kings of the earth are drunk with the wine of her fornication that was coming out of her cup. I submit to you. Mm, let me let, let me let me let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. Here. Mm, I don't want to get ahead of myself. You shall be filled with drunkenness and sorrow and with the cup of astonishment and desolation with the cup of your sister Samaria. You shall even drink it and you shall suck it out and you shall break the shreds thereof and pluck off your own breast. For I have spoken it, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back. Therefore, bear you also the lewdness of your whoredoms. God is saying, because you, my people have thrown me behind your back because you've chosen to be like the nations round about you. You didn't want to be faithful in covenant to me. You didn't want to be a separated people unto me. You didn't want to walk in the covenant. You didn't want to carry the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. You wanted to become a whore and you have whored yourself out. You have sold yourself out to the highest bidder in the land. That's what he said to Israel and Judah. Old covenant. Now stay with me. Mm, mm, mm. Stay with me. Verse 36, the Lord said, Moreover unto me, son of man, will you judge Aholah and uh, Aholabah? Yeah, declare unto them their abominations. Verse 37, that they have committed adultery. Who committed adultery? The people of God committed adultery. They committed adultery with Baal worship. They committed adultery with the Asherah pole. They committed adultery by bringing in false gods. They committed adultery by bringing in idol worship. They became idolatrous in worshiping the gods of the land, just like the church has done in the world. But we'll get to the church in a minute. This is Old Covenant. I'm showing you the basis of what the book of Revelation is talking about. Stay with me. <laughs> Moreover, he says, you've committed adultery. Blood is in their hands. And with their idols have they committed adultery. And they have caused their sons who they bore unto me. You understand what I'm saying? God is saying to his wife, his people, his woman, that the sons that you have borne unto me, you have caused them to pass through the fire to devour them. You've given your children over for human sacrifice. This is the people of God. This is not the heathens. Are y'all listening to me? This is not the heathen. These are the people of God. These are God's covenant people but they've cast God behind their back and now they've adopted all of these other practices of the false religions of the world they've given their children over to demons my goodness moreover you've done this unto me you have defiled my sanctuary in the same day, and you have profaned my Sabbaths. Y'all ain't listening. Y'all, y'all, you have defiled my sanctuary. These are the people that God delivered out of Egypt. Y'all understand? These are the people that God sent the plagues to Egypt to get them delivered. These are the people that God brought to Mount Sinai and gave them the covenant. These are the people who were redeemed out of Egypt. These are the people who were led in the, in, in the wilderness by a cloud of fire, by, by a pillar of fire by day and a cloud by 
a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. These are a people who God has rescued from the hand of the deliverer, led them through the wilderness for 40 years. This is a people who walked in divine health for 40 years, saw the supernatural manifested power of God in the wilderness. These are the people that God took into the land under Joshua, gave them the land of promise, but told them, do not, when you go into the land, do not become like the nation round about them by the time we get to the book of Ezekiel the scripture says they had committed whoredom they had cast God behind their back and adopted the practices of the world and the nations round about them this is what you call a nation who has gone into apostasy are you with me? <laughs> and if I have any moderators in the room and, and y'all start seeing any crazy stuff popping up, y'all just do me a favor and go ahead and take care of it because I don't, I, don't, I don't have the time. This, these are people God has delivered. They have apostatized. And God said, you have committed whoredoms in the land. Now watch. For when they had slain their children to their idols... Then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it, and lo, thus have they done in the midst of my house. Y'all got the picture? These folk will go out and worship demons. These people will go out and do the same thing that the heathen round about them would do, but then the same day they would show up in the sanctuary to worship God. Are you with me? <laughs> are you with me they would go listen folks they go out and they cause their children they would offer their children to Moloch they would get involved in all of this false worship all of this false sacrifice all of this other stuff and the same day they would go to the house of the Lord and profane the sanctuary y'all stay with me now y'all stay with me we gonna get back to Babylon in a minute Right. Furthermore, he says that you sent for men to come from far unto whom a messenger was sent. And lo, they came for who you did wash yourself. You washed yourself. You, you cleaned yourself up and then you painted your eyes and then you decked yourself with ornaments. And then you sat upon a stately bed, and then you prepared a table before it, whereupon you set my incense and my oil. And a voice of a multitude, being at ease, was with her. And with the men of the common sort were brought, the Sabians from the wilderness, and they put bracelets upon their hands and beautiful crowns upon their head. Then said I unto her that was old in adultery, Will you now commit whoredom with her and she with them? You got the picture. Not only did they sacrifice their children, they sent for the common men. They just sent for the basis of men in the land. They sent for all kind of people to come to them. And then they would go in, they wash themselves up. Scripture said they put on all their makeup. They put on all their bracelets. They deck themselves with all of their adornments. This is what Israel did. An apostate people who was supposed to be the bride, who was supposed to be God's wife, had become nothing more than a common street hoe. You got the picture. <laughs> you got the picture. All right. Now, I ain't making this up. I'm reading this out the Bible. All right. I'm read this is actually in the Bible. It said, righteous men, yet they went in unto her as they go in unto a woman that plays the harlot. So they went in unto Aholah and unto Abelah, the lewd women, and the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women that shed blood because they are adulteresses and blood is in 
their hands. That's the people of Israel under the old covenant. Israel had become a whore. She would not remain faithful, wiping the crumbs from their lips and rise up as if they had done nothing. And they got so bold about it, they would go out and do all of their false, false worship and then come right into the sanctuary and think nothing about it. Y'all got the picture. <laughs> Y'all got the picture. All right. Let's go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, there was a woman in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, and she being with child, she being with child, cried, travailing in pain. This is old covenant Israel giving birth to the Messiah. And as you read down through the rest of Revelation chapter 12, we find that the devil persecuted the woman. The only problem is by the time we get to Revelation chapter 17, this woman that was clothed with the sun, this woman that was birthed in glory, this woman that came forth in power, this woman who was the bride of Christ, this woman who in the book of Acts, this woman had become a whore. The church has become the whore of Babylon. Y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. I told you I better put my disclaimer up. I better put my disclaimer up. This video is going to contain some content that some viewers may find disturbing. I'm just saying the church has become the whore of Babylon. Now let's go back to Revelation chapter 17 for a minute. And let's dissect this a little bit more. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 7. The angel said unto me, Wherefore did you marvel? I'm going to tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her that has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and will go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is and it is not we're going to unpack that in our class in biblical prophecy i don't have time to unpack it tonight here is the mind that has wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits the seven mountains are the seven mountains that they said rome sat on and i have historical documentation for this but i don't have time to go into it the seven mountain is not the seven mountain theological error that people are preaching today stay with me there's a whole camp of prophets who are preaching what they call the seven mountain theology. And this is the mandate of the church. That is not the mandate of the church. That seven mountain theology that's being preached by these so-called prophets, the only place you see the seven mountains is identified with the beast that's carrying the whore. Well, if the seven mountains in the book of Revelation are identified with the beast that's carrying the whore, how do we then pull it out and say this is the mandate of the church? It's not the mandate of the church. It's a doctrine of a devil. It's part of the cup that the woman is holding because the woman is the apostate church Writing on top of civil government. It's a blending. This is what happened in the papacy. Y'all stay with me for a minute. Y'all stay with me. This is the image. What's happening today 
is there's an image, Revelation chapter 13, there's an image to the beast that's being made in the earth today. And they're trying to move the church right back into the apostasy and the whoredom that the church lived through for 1,260 years. When the Roman Catholic Church came to power and persecuted the church. Y'all stay with me. Blessing, Steve. Y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. See, we forgot all that history, though. We forgot what the Reformation was about. We forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See this? See, <laughs> I told y'all, this video is going to contain some content that some folk are going to find disturbing because some people have bought into that lie. Oh, yes, they have. Some people have brought into that lie, and that is what is powering all of these false prophets that we're seeing in the earth. That's what's powering the false prophets. Mystery Babylon. Why? Because she is also the mother of harlots. How can you have a church system that has become the mother of harlots? Because they're born of the same spirit. Let me say it again. Let me, let me say that again. <laughs> the reason you can have that the reason you can have a false church system that's giving birth to daughters is because it's born of the same spirit. And what I'm saying is the apostate church that was identified in the middle of the 1500 that generated the Protestant Reformation because they all identified the Roman Catholic Church, not the people, the system, the papacy, they identified it with the whore of Babylon. It's a false religious system that rode upon the beast, pagan Rome, and they blended church and state, and they persecuted the saints. Watch this, watch this. Verse six says this, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. What institution do you know historically that is drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs? There's only one institution that's drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs. That is the papacy. Because they kill anybody that disagreed with them. That's what the Inquisitions were about. That's what the, the Dark Ages were about. That's what all of that was about. It was the papal power who killed and persecuted the saints of God. Because the church became a whore. That is the whore of Babylon. But the whore has daughters. Now, we going... Yeah. Yeah. We're going to open this up in a minute. Watch this. Watch this now. Let's talk about the daughters. Let's, 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 let's talk about the daughters of the whore. The papacy was identified as being the whore of Babylon by all of the major reformers. Let me say it again. <laughs> and it's amazing because you give this little tidbit of history to most Protestants, they either don't know about it or they don't want to know about it. They don't understand what brought about the Protestant Reformation. They forgot. <laughs> but now what I want to show you here is how the wine of Babylon has impacted the daughters of Babylon, the 95 theses. Now, I can't deal with them all. I just want to deal with four. And I want to show you four of the major errors that existed in the papacy, but I want to show you how those teachings 
is what scripture refers to as the wine of her fornication. Remember Jesus said no man puts new wine in an old wine skin. And he's talking about the, the new covenant. Remember Jesus talked about that? So wine becomes synonymous with teaching. All right. <laughs> I want to show you just four. But I want to show you in dealing with these four, I want to show you how many churches today have adopted those same teachings and how it is impacting the church today and why many churches, though they claim to be Protestant, they claim to be Protestant, but they hold the teaching and the practice of the whore. Stay with me. Number one. We are. 